Hi, Dr. Rambo. Thank you so much for joining me in this podcast episode. Really appreciate it. How are you today? I'm well, Razal. Thank you for having me. Yeah, the pleasure is mine. I'm super excited to have a conversation with you. We have like a different topic, which is like a woman no alone and how to support them. And also we're going to cover on the men as well, like obviously they're no alone too. So before that, I'd love to know more about yourself. How did you become an entrepreneur yourself? And now you're helping other people, individuals achieving their goal. Uh, so yeah, let's start. So I, my focus, I study a lot on, um, focus a lot on female rivalry and more so how to overcome it and be better together. So I, I kind of stumbled on this topic. Um, my background is in organizational psychology. And so it's like psychology of the working environment. And so when I wrote my PhD dissertation, I had to write on a problem I saw occurring at work. And I saw this happening. I saw mm. that men were being pitted against each other or they weren't, they were doing unkind things to each other, but it didn't just stay with the women who were involved. Everybody could feel it. I call it the elephant in the boardroom. So it was like walking on eggshells. So I wrote about it. I interviewed a lot of women and I realized that, wow, this is a big issue. Then fast forward, um, I'd gotten my degree and I'm working at work and it happened to me and I didn't realize it was happening. And so I thought, oh my gosh, like if I've studied it as intensely, if I've interviewed women and I don't see when it's occurring to me and I have all this knowledge, what's it doing for women who have no clue and you feel alone and how can I better support those women and share the knowledge that I've learned? So that's in a nutshell, how I came to do the work I'm doing. Yeah, interesting. So you had like your decades of experience in the field, like how you've been helping other people. So how how does it actually work like a woman rivalry and like uh, that things actually we are using right now? Is it through like a professional wise or like a, do you think like a, it's more about like a personal level? So, you know, I started my research in the professional environment, but what I really realized is um, it's both. It can happen at work. It can happen in your family. Um, it can happen in social circles. Um, and I realized it can start at a very young age in grade school. I realized too, especially with um, the pandemic and COVID, it, I, I had more older women telling me it was happening. That was more in their social circles and no age, no demographic, no culture is off limits. I've talked to women, you know, from around the world and they'll say, yes, they'll raise their hand. This happens to me too. So it's, I'm not saying it doesn't happen to men. I just have only studied women, but um, often when it does begin to occur it's very passive aggressive behaviors and so you'll you'll kind of doubt yourself when it begins to happen and most women it's rare that I haven't met a woman who's experienced it in some form or another yeah interesting and do you think like they go into like a depression because of that like a because they probably not sharing with other people or like they feeling all alone and dealing with themselves or like, do you find like, you know, they're more like a capable of handling it themselves? It's a combination. So yes, you coined it well with depression. Um, I, because it's very intangible and it's hard to define, it's hard to share with somebody what's going on. And often, so I'll give an example from the work environment, when it happens at work, chances are it's not happening in front of a bunch of other people. Yeah. So it might be you and her alone in the room and she'll say something and you'll think, well, gosh, why is she treating me this way? I didn't do anything to her. So over time, it will begin to wear down your self-esteem and you'll begin to doubt yourself. So I call it that your world turns gray a little bit. And if it is happening at work, it's not a problem that you just keep at work. It, it comes home with you, you know, because you're not feeling good about yourself. So I've had women um, try to um, handle it when they're in it, you know, like venting to a friend, maybe going to have a glass of wine, you know, talking to their significant other. 
but often it's because it's hard to talk about it can be hard to deal with it when you're in it because you don't really understand it and if it's happening at work there's a fear factor involved because that's your livelihood and how you make yeah. money and so how do you escape that you know it's not just so easy to go get a new job <laughs> so yeah, exactly. women there's a, a way to cope in the moment, but I think a lot of women um, really can more effectively cope when they're out of it and they have that reflection and hindsight to see really what happened. Yeah, and I've seen like another thing, like especially with a woman, men's are different. Like if something is going strange at workplace, they tend to leave the job or like you look for something else or like they gonna talk back to their boss or like their colleague they are yeah. always like a, a there is a kind of like an argumental situation with a man compared to a woman like if the boss said something to them or like their colleague they probably not gonna say anything back to them probably they, it's gonna kill them inside but yeah. they're gonna leave the job they're gonna be feel like it, it's their own fault that's why it's happening they try to correct themselves even the other person is wrong certain time most of the times but they think like it's me like i'm the one like not doing the right things and they always like insecure so those who is like professionally like feeling like that so what would be your advice in order to like they can identify like it could be their fault or could be like opposite person like you need to identify like is it my fault or is it my boss or my colleague well you you let me just go back to the way the men and women handle it you that's very clear often men can argue and then they might be out on the golf course having a beer you know they leave yeah. it there. and with women at least in the research that i found it it stays with them so women will think it's their fault i i always think it's very good to have some self-reflection like look a self-check is a reality check so like am i contributing to this problem if so how what can i do to make it better the other side of the equation if you're in the path or the way of somebody that treats people this way you just might be in the wrong path at the wrong time and if it's not you it's going to be somebody else so um chances are you may not have anything to do with the behavior that's being targeted toward you. What I always tell people is you have absolutely no control over how somebody treats you, but you do have control how you react and respond. And it might not feel good. And um, you might think, what have I done? But how you respond to her or the whole situation is a reflection of you and getting over it. Um, Let's give work for an example. If it is occurring at work, because it's very hard to name what it is, um, document, document, document. After a time, take notes on everything. Um, after a time, a pattern will evolve. If you feel comfortable sharing with somebody at work, do that. Um, if you feel comfortable, um, sometimes, let's give work example again, if you're at work, um, Maybe you want to talk to that individual one-on-one, -on -one. maybe go somewhere else. So you're out of the work environment and have a cup of coffee. Yeah. I did that one time and it backfired. She denied everything. She said there wasn't a problem. So be prepared for that. Like you, um, they may not admit there's an issue, but, um, the, the documenting is the big thing. And, um, then if you do go to HR or bring in senior leadership, again and also in a social situation you have proof to talk about what's occurring yeah yeah it, it is important and also like communication like you need to ask them right question and you shouldn't be scared of like what's going on like if you always freak out like you're gonna lose your job then obviously you're not able to kind of handle the situation and it's the long run like it's affecting your ability like uh, if someone is bullying you every single time and if you let them happen then it's going to get worse over time and it's not to get better so you have to have like a boundaries like a why things like and you don't like and um, yeah that, that is really important but oftentimes like a woman i tend to see like a, even though with my wife she struggled in our, our workplace like a first yeah few months and she never said it, anything to me until it's gone too much to it and then she spoke up like this environment is not something like uh, i can work on and she's got really, really depressed. And I ask him the question and I figure out like what's actually happening to him. Then she always used to think, like I mentioned, like it's on her fault. But she yeah. never thought about like his other person could be wrong sometime. And eventually she left her job during the pandemic and she never went back right now. Yeah. Like, she works from home. So 
seeing that kind of like how people can be open up and ask for support lots of time they think look too embarrassed or like i feel like or like i'm not worthy i'm not capable of doing the job that's why i need a kind of help or support sharing with my partner so how a woman can open up more and like they can get the help or support they needed i think you coined it it's the communication so i I can relate to what your wife went through and I'm sorry she experienced that because that is an example of a, a work environment that is not psychologically safe. So I think um, you first and foremost, when you go into a job, you know, granted you're, you're working because you want or need the money, but you also, it's a two way street. Yeah. They're working with you and you're working for them. So you have to ask the questions. Is this environment right for me? Um, maybe you interview some people that have been there a while to get a true sense of that feel, because that's, um, that is that gray area. That's really, you know, the job description may be wonderful, but the culture can be hard to assess. But yes, you, if you are in an environment that is not supporting you, where you feel vulnerable, that you can be yourself, where you can ask questions and raise your hand and not feel like, oh my gosh, I'm stupid. I asked something that rocked the boat. Like you have to question, is that the right environment for you to be in, which is what your your wife did. So hats off to her. I'm sorry she you know, sat on that for a few months, but sometimes it takes a little bit of time to truly understand the environment. So it's it's asking yourself questions. What am I willing to accept and live with? What are my boundaries? How is this making me feel? So some true reflection. And, you know, you always, when you start something new, you have a window of um, where you're truly understanding and knowing that environment. But I'm a big advocate of going with your gut too. If something doesn't feel right, you have to listen to that inner whisper that is telling you this is not right and you deserve better than that. So um, you have to be your own self advocate, which can be very hard, but I think it's putting up boundaries, truly asking some deep questions that might produce some answers you may not want, but then you're, it's the hard truth, you know, looking at things. And again, also, there's no shame in seeking help to talk to somebody else about this as well, because it, it in the example of your wife, as you know, it didn't just stay at work, it came home with her, you know, yeah, so yeah. it affects so much. Yeah, it affects the relationship as well, like she wasn't herself for like the first two, three months. And uh, at the beginning, we didn't know what's going on until like yeah. she spoke up after a few months, and then realized, yeah, she's not sleeping well she's not eating well she's not looking after herself like she's not how she used to be like uh, always constantly even though weekends she's thinking about her work like going back to monday and that's like frustrating and even though with the men like i struggle with my job like i lived in a like a chronic stress moment every single time i was in a workplace because of when i first moved to uk like i had a job in a restaurant i was a dishwasher and because it wasn't the dishwashing job, I respect any kind of job and I was enjoying doing what I was doing, but actually the, the people around me and I, I wasn't able to share with anyone. I was 16 years old, I wasn't able to share it with anyone and I didn't want to quit in the same time because then I want to feel like a failure as well. So I lived with it three and a half years and the people said so many things, so many meaning things. And I had to live with it. And every time I would just uh, gone inside the shop, I felt like uh, the anxiety piling up till I left the place. And even though I came home with it, even though nighttime, I still had nightmare thinking about the environment. Uh, yeah. That was like really, really tough. So I know like a lot of men are going through the same thing. Like obviously maybe not they're 16, probably they're in their 30s, 40s. And they probably thinking like, hey, it's not right time to, uh, leave my job probably I'm not gonna able to get a high salary job like that I have a mortgage payment I have like a lot of responsibility to take care of my family what would you be advised to them like what they can do in in terms of like a, their mental well-being well you you coined it it's so stressful on so many levels and you do take it home with you and I call it the Sunday blues when you your yeah. whole weekend is wasted and you're thinking about oh my gosh I've got to go back to work tomorrow and you have that stomach dread um, one thing I always tell people, men and women, if you can keep your resume up to date with everything you are working on, I know that seems, um, like 
it may not fit with this conversation as much, but it's a big deal. It's a lot of work to look for a job. So if you're always current, then that's something that cannot be as time consuming if you are in a position where um, you feel stuck and you have to get out because it's sucking the life out of you. Um, I think for men and women, like what we said a few minutes ago, it's having an outlet where you know you have support to truly be yourself and and vent and and bounce ideas off of so you know so you're sharing somebody is helping you um support that load that's a big deal um seeking counseling will help um and again it's the hard questions of if this isn't right what else can i do where can you know it's stressful to be the sole provider and know like okay if this goes away what what next you know the unknown for any type of situation is very scary but um if you break things down into bite-sized pieces and look at them as individual components about how you can tackle those i always think that's helpful so you're not just taking the whole thing at once but truly it breaks my heart so with going back to the women to women when they've experienced um this type of situation where they've been at odds with another woman. So many women tell me, I won't work for a woman again. I won't work on all female team. I have no female friends. This may be applicable to men as well, but yeah. there are so many people in this world. It breaks my heart when people feel alone. And so it's searching out and finding people who can support you. I think if you know somebody has your back, it gives you the confidence and that extra bit of strength that may help you cross that next hurdle. Yeah, definitely. Totally agree with that. So Dr. Amber, we're coming to the end of this podcast. It's been a great pleasure having you on the show. So those who's listening, if anyone wants to learn more about you or like find about your work, where's the best place to find it? So my website is to be coaching and consulting. That's T O B E. I'm also on Instagram and LinkedIn, and I have a book uh, on this topic behind frenemy lines, rising above female rivalry to be unstoppable together. Um, thank you so much for having me. I've enjoyed our conversation. Yeah, the pleasure was mine. And thank you so much for coming to the, today. And I wish you best of luck with your new year. Uh, I hope you achieve all of your goals financially and professionally. So thank yeah, you. thanks for coming today. Thank you. Most welcome. That's a wrap, guys. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast episode. I hope you got some value from it and enjoyed our podcast episode. And if you are interested to learn more about Dr. Amber, go check out our website or visit our social media platforms. Until then, I'm talking to you in the next episode. Take care.